Family Theater presents Bobby Driscoll and John McIntyre. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents John McIntyre in Mahoney's Lucky Day. To introduce the drama, your host, Bobby Driscoll. Thank you, Jean Baker. I wish I could express my wonder and delight when I first heard the stories of the Knights of the Round Table and the other tales of gallant men of old their shining armor and their prancing steeds. I always hoped that somewhere they still rode this earth, battling dragons, rescuing damsels in distress, steadfast in the cause of helping the helpless. Well, we're going to tell you the story of a modern knight in shining armor. His helmet is an old cloth cap, and a rather shabby leather jacket is his armor. His mount has four wheels and six cylinders, and it belongs to the Purple Ta Taxi Cab Company, Incorporated. But his spirit is the unquenchable spirit of Launcelot and Galahad, and his faith is equally dauntless. His name is Mike Mahoney, and with John McIntyre as Mike, we bring you the story of Mahoney's Lucky Day. Wheat cakes, Mike? Mm. Oh, yeah. Thanks, baby. Hmm. How's the coffee? Huh? Oh, fine, fine. Mike, I want a word with you. That is, if you can tear yourself loose from them funny papers for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Mike, I'm talking to you. This is terrible. Terrible. Scandalous would be a better word for it. And I'm glad it's finally come to your lordship's attention. Nor they got Tracy trapped in the incinerator and pruned face going to let him have it with the atomic pulverizer. Beats me how he'll ever get out of this one. Michael Mahoney! Yes, Nora, darling. Hmm. We are about to have a lesson in arithmetic. Now, how much is two from four? Why, two. It's always... Very good, very good. Now, subtract five from ten and what he gets? Five? But You're I... a prize scholar. Now, tell me this. What's left over when you subtract our expenses from your paycheck? Well, I guess it's about... What, uh, yeah, I, I see what you mean, all right. Oh, Mike, you've been working for the Purple Cab Company for eight years, not counting the time you built all them airplanes during the war. Eight years? You sure it's been that long? Eight years and two months come Monday. Well, I sure met a lot of interesting people in that time. Did I ever tell you about this fellow? <laughs> I've been looking all over the place this morning. I can't find the paper. Well, I didn't think you could. Uh, Sit down and eat your breakfast. But the paper, I, I got to see what happened to Tracy and Worby. I'm sitting on them. What? And I'm not getting off until we finish our little talk of yesterday. The one you bamboozled your way out of, as usual. Hey, right, Nora, what, what, are, what are we talking about? I, I haven't... This... When are you going to do it, Mike? Uh, <laughs> Gesundheit. This rotten hay fever. Well, I asked you a question. No, no, I thought maybe I, I'd better wait until... Um, What's the matter with today? Uh, today? Uh, well, I, I don't think After that you better... punched the clock at the garage this morning, why don't you walk right into Farrell's office and say, Farrell, how about me, Michael Mahoney, for that next road supervisor job? But I, I Who don't... Who has a better right to it? Why, nobody. So? No, I'll do it, right away. Oh, is that a promise, Mike? You really mean it? Certainly. I got a feeling this is my lucky day. And the gal shrugs her shoulders and says, Now get this, get this, Fats. Uh, Farrell. Uh, she says, Oh, just lucky, I guess. <laughs> yes. Well, what's on your mind, Mahoney? <coughs> well... You see... Get to the point. This is my busy morning, and you ought to be out rolling your hack right this minute. Yeah, well, maybe i better see you some other time. Oh, no, you're in here now. Let's have it. Well, it's about... about that 
road supervisor job. Well? Well, how about giving me a chance at it? At a supervisor's job? You? Yeah, me. Why not? Look, Mahoney, that's a job for a guy who can handle responsibility. And what do you mean by that, Crack? Just what you think. As a cab driver, you're supposed to phone in to the dispatcher several times a day, right? Right. I mean, I... How I'm... many times did you call in last Thursday? Thursday? Well, that was different. You I... didn't call in at all, not once. But I told you about that. There was an old guy and his wife, and they were celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, and I was driving them down to the terminal to catch the train for Nyack. What's all this, Scott? I'm trying to tell you. And they get into this big fight, and he he goes into the men's bar at the Ritz, and he won't come out. So, naturally, I... You I had to stick your nose into it and forget all about your number one responsibility. You see, that's just what I mean. Well, it was a nice old couple. I just couldn't drive off and leave them in a mess like that. Why not? It was none of your business. And listen, Mahoney... If a woman engages a cab for a trip to the maternity hospital, what should be the odds on her making it? On time, that is. I don't know. Maybe... At least 20,000 to one. And how many fortunate women have become mothers in your cab during the past five years? Now, wait a minute. Seven. Seven in five years. That's not fair. Is, is it my fault? I'm a busy man, Mahoney. Go out and get over to your stand at the radio station. When you settle down and do the job you're supposed to be doing, we can start thinking about a promotion. What's up? Goodbye, Mahoney. Close the door on your way out. Uh, lucky days. Ha! Well, never again. Let people worry about their own troubles. Uh, what'll I tell Nora? Women. Driver, I presume this cab is not engaged? Uh, no, Nora. Where to, Nora? I beg your pardon. Oh, wait. Excuse me, young fellow. Uh, where was you wanting to go? Any place away from here. How's that? Here's ten dollars. Now, shall we proceed? Certainly. At your service. <laughs> Young man. Yes, driver. My name is Michael Mahoney. What's yours? How do you do, Mr. Mahoney? My name is Leroy Ledbetter. Uh, pleased to make your acquaintance. Uh, this is our second time through the park, Leroy. Was there some place else you... You may drive me to 89th Street and 5th Avenue, and that will be all. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. I take him to this big place on Fifth Avenue, and I get him the change, give him the change for his $10 bill. Then I figure I might as well come home for lunch. You got some more of this delicious pot roast, honey bunch? Here, finish it up. And then what happened? Well, he gives me a tip, and then he turns and goes off up the alley, walking stiff and straight like a little soldier. Is that all? Well, not entirely. All of a sudden, he bends over and he starts to cry. And then before I could even... Get out of the cab, he starts running and disappears in back of the house. Ah, oh, the poor little fella. Yeah, ain't it a shame? Yes. I figure his old man must be a janitor or something, huh, Nora? Well, uh, something. What did you say their kid's name was? I didn't say, but I think it was Larry. It was... No, it was Leroy. That's it. Leroy Ledbetter. Leroy Ledbetter? That's right. Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? Well, sure, he's a celebrity. Go on, he's just a kid. We saw him in a movie short just last month, and he's on the radio every week. He's the star of the juvenile quiz show. You know, I did think he looked familiar. Oh, Mike, why don't you use your head? What are you thinking of all of the time? Well, I... I that's funny. That's just what Farrell said to me this... Uh-oh. Uh-huh. So you've been stalling. You did speak to Farrell. Well, come on, out with it, out with it. Uh, <clears throat> little more pot roast, honey bee. No, you've already had enough for six. I want to hear what Farrell had to say, and I want to hear every last word. Yes, Phoebe, doll. Well, you see, it was this way. I, I went into the car. Uh, women. 
talks me into asking Farrell for the job, and then she gets mad when I tell her what old fatso says. Well, it'll be a long, cold day before I go out of my way for some strip. Yes, sir. Where to, sir? Oh. Hello. Hello, Mr. Mahoney. Could you get me away from here fast? Yeah, but... But where? Well, well, here we go again. Ah, uh, that's better. Mr. Mahoney. Yes, sir. I... I feel I owe you an apology. This morning you were trying to be helpful and I was very rude. I'm truly sorry. I sure, Leroy. Think nothing of it. Any old time I can do something for you, you just say the word. Thank you, Mr. Mahoney. Could you drive me to the park again, please? Absolutely. Any place special? Uh, no. Just cruise around. Oh, still meditated, Leroy. Yes, I have yet to find the solution to my problem. Check. On to Central Park. Leroy, the squirrels are beginning to throw peanuts at us. Uh, don't you think maybe we ought to... Very well, Mr. Mahoney. You may leave the park and drive to the nearest restaurant. I, I didn't have much lunch. Well, I know a joint on 3rd Avenue that serves triple cheeseburgers with chili, onions, and relish. That hmm? sounds quite nourishing. I, I think we may have some conversation over the food, Mr. Mahoney. You will be my guest, of course. Well, now, that's mighty kind of you, son. But I think I'd better... No, oh. no, I insist. Some instinct tells me that you will be a sympathetic listener. Uh, your instinct is hitting on all six today, Leroy. Sympathetic listening is my favorite sport. Only, are you sure your mama won't be wondering what happened to you? Mr. Mahoney, please, I am not an infant. Kindly remember... <laughs> For heaven's sake, I'm sure the boy must be all right. He's probably in some movie theater watching a triple Western feature. Oh, Clifton, you know Leroy shares my opinion of Western movies. He thinks they are childish and utterly unworthy of consideration. Yeah, that's right, so he does. Kind of a shame, too. Day I caught one last Saturday afternoon that was a Lulu. It seems this fellow was the fastest man with a gun in the whole state of Texas, and the other man held the mortgage. Clifton Ledbetter, how can you stand there calmly discussing your escapades while our only child may be lying in some, some foul ditch with his life's blood ebbing away? Oh, come now, Bessie. You're just getting yourself all upset over nothing. He just pulled the same stunt this morning, didn't he? The show this morning, he did not have an appointment with his radio producer, and this afternoon, he did, and failed to arrive. Now, Leroy is usually very conscientious about things like that. But he's just a kid. You can't expect... Listen here, he is not just a kid. And I won't have you saying that Leroy is the same as any ordinary child. Now, are you or are you not going to call the police? The police? Oh, no, now, that won't be necessary. If you just calm down... Operator, operator, get me the police department. Oh, Bessie. Hello, hello, this is Mrs. Clifton Ledbetter. Yes, my son Leroy has been kidnapped or, or murdered or... What? Well, of course I'm sure. He made his usual Saturday afternoon appearance on the juvenile quiz program and just said... No, thanks. Now, let's see if I got this straight, Leroy. You've been on this radio quiz show since you were eight years old. Check. Check. But all that time, you never muffed a question. Check. Check. That is until today, Mr. Mahoney. Aha. Uh -huh. They stuck you with a real hard one, huh? On the contrary, it was quite simple. I just can't understand how I managed to miss it. Mm. It was easy, huh? Come on, Grant! They, planned, they played a few bars of a very familiar musical composition. I identified it as an excerpt from the second movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Oh, and this was a bad mistake. Oh, ghastly. Actually, the excerpt was from the third movement. You don't see. Let's face it, Mr. Mahoney. I'm a failure, a complete failure. You're right. That's your age. It's pretty tragic, isn't it? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. One wrong answer in four years. Why, they'll have you back on that program next week. Sure as shoot. 
Just wait and see. Now. Oh, I suppose they will, all right. And then everything will be just Dandy, won't it? Yes, just Dandy. You're right. You've been holding out on me, haven't you? Holding out? Covering up. There's something else that's really got you bothered, right? Waitress, a check, please. Why don't you tell me about us? Maybe I'll be. Yes, Let's get to the cab, Mr. Mahoney. Sure, sure, all right. You want me to take you home now, Leroy, huh? To the park again, Mr. Mahoney. The park? Oh, no. Them birds, them squirrels. My head. Just a little further up this hill, Mr. Mahoney. Then you can park behind those bushes. Certainly, Leroy. But remember, this ain't no Jeep I'm driving. This is fine. Park it right here. Why did we sneak up here, anyway? What's all the... Say, there's some kids playing football down there. Ah, they're pretty good, too. Yes. Hey, that was a beauty. Leroy, right. here, I'll explain it to you. Now, you see that fellow... It that... was a quarterback sneak operating, operating from a modified T formation. Well, now, how did you know that? I should. I invented it. You invented it? I invented all their plays. No. Well, say, who, who are those kids? That's the Park Avenue Pirates, and they're getting ready to play the West Side Wolverines. You don't say. Well, why ain't you down there with them? Be because they kicked me out. They, they said they didn't want me anymore. But I don't care. It doesn't bother me at all. Ah, all right, now move over, son. You and me are going to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I understand, Lieutenant. Now, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. What is it, Clifton? What's happened? Have they found him? Leroy was seen in a beanery over on 3rd Avenue. He was with a cab driver. A cab driver? Oh, my baby. My poor, poor baby. Now, after all, Bessie, when you married me, I was a cab driver. Clifton, please. Uh, what were they doing in the restaurant? Eating, of course. Leroy picked up the check and they left together. Oh, the fiend. He has my poor little boy in his power. All right, here, Leroy. Use my handkerchief. Thank you. You feel better now, son? Uh-huh. Good. Now, you listen to me. Them football plays you figured out for your team were mighty clever. And I guess you think it was kind of mean of them to toss you off the team, don't you? Y yes. Well, suppose you think back a bit and then answer this question. Who carried the ball in all those wonderful plays? Why, why, I did naturally. Naturally? I was the best player. Why, it, it was my idea. Leroy, did you ever figure out a play where you did the blocking and some of the other guys carried the ball? Why, no, Mr. Mahoney. Well, why not, boy? The other fellas blocked for you, didn't they? Yes, sir. Well, football's a team game, Leroy. Maybe you're the kind of a guy who does better when he's all alone. I... I guess maybe I am. Uh, the trouble is, you're not very happy all by yourself, are you? Oh, gosh, Mr. Mahoney. Well, now it's all right, kids. We can straighten this out. <laughs> we, we can? How? You're going to go down the hill and apologize. Oh, no, I... I couldn't. Well, it'll be tough, I know, but it won't be any tougher than what you got to do after that. Why, by five o'clock this afternoon, you're going to be the most beat up, bruised, battered, and best blocker in this whole darn town. And a boy! An old fight in there! You! Uh oh! He's out! Now he's getting up! That's the stuff, Leroy! See you there, boy! Hey, you! Hey, cabby. Huh? Uh, look, I'm busy now, pal. Uh, go get another cab, will you? Hit him, Leroy! That's the stuff! Who's Leroy, yeah. cabby? One with the bloody nose? Yeah, that's my boy. How do you like him? Isn't he a kid? He, uh, his last name wouldn't be led better, would it? Oh, you know that. You, you, uh, he's a terror, isn't he? Okay, Wait. Bill, I got the guy. Keep an eye on the kid while I phone it in. Come on, cabby. Hey, let go of my arm. What is this? It's a pinch, pally. Are you coming quiet, or would you rather do it the hard way? A pinch? What for? Kidnapping. Let's go. Oh, 
Okay, Mahoney, it's your move. All right. Here, here, and there. Well, I'll be a triple jump. Mahoney, you're the best checker player we ever had in this jail. Oh, I don't know. No, I mean it. If I had a brain like yours, I... Excuse me, Mike. Certainly, Roger. Yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm interrogating them right now. No kidding? Well, okay, right away. I set them up. You got the red ones this time. I'm sorry, Mike. They want you upstairs. I think they're letting you go. Oh? Well, too bad, Roger. Some other time, maybe, huh? It's mighty nice of you to drive me home, Mr. Redbetter. Uh, that's the least I can do, Mike. Well, I can just stop at the garage and see fat stuff. Well, I guess I better forget about that. Yeah, I'm very grateful to you, Mike. <laughs> I admit I didn't recognize Leroy when I first saw him. <laughs> he looked like a hacky who tangled with a bus. <laughs> <laughs> didn't he? What a shiner. I never saw him so happy. The way he talked about you. <sighs> I was sure wish he felt that way about me. Ah, it's just that you've always treated him as if he was something expensive. He's a real kid. You gotta treat him that way. You two should get along fine, Cliff. You really think so? Certainly. Oh, say, I almost forgot. I owe Leroy a buck seventy-five change from his cab fare. <laughs> well, you're home, Mike. Yeah, home. Bet your wife will be glad to see you. Yeah, glad. I'm not going to try to thank you again, but you'll be hearing uh, uh, Look, uh, there, there's a place down the corner. Uh, maybe we could go in and uh, play some checkers, or maybe... Uh, maybe no, we... Mike. Oh, there's something I've got to attend to right away. Uh, good night, and thanks again. Uh, good night. Well, uh, I better go up and take it like a man. <laughs> See, or I went and I did it again. I started out this morning to get me a promotion, and instead I got tossed in the creek and I lost my job. You're mad, and I'll bet you're through with me, and I don't blame you. I'm just a no good, good for nothing. Is that so? Now, you listen to me, Mr. Mahoney. Just because I married the kind of a man who couldn't turn his back on a little boy in trouble, I won't have you nor anyone else saying things like that. Yeah, I can't blame you if you just up and you... What? Hi, you big fool, you... I want you just the way you are. Always getting into jams and trying to help the whole wide world and coming home and reading the funnies and eating us out of house and home. You... You're not angry? You, you're not ashamed of me? Ashamed of you? Sure, I'm so proud I could bust. But I lost my job. What, what are we going to do about the... Stand uh, still, you big lummox. Stop talking long enough for a woman to get a kiss at you. <laughs> hey, Nora, I... Hey! Hey! Mike, the doorbell. Hmm? I said the doorbell. What about? It's ringing. It's ringing. <laughs> no, Mike. <laughs> yes? Good evening, Mrs. Mahoney. Is Mike home? Well, just a minute. Mike, it's Farrell. Fatso. What? Let him in. Uh, come in, Mr. Farrell. Well, hello, Mike. Uh, Make it fast, Farrell. I'm a busy man. Uh, sure, I didn't want to disturb you at home, but I thought you'd like to hear the good news. You can skip the sarcasm. Purple Cab isn't the only cab company in town, you. Hey, now, hold on a minute. I come over to tell you that starting tomorrow morning, you're the new road supervisor. Mike, did quiet, you hear that? Quiet, quiet. As far, as far as I'm concerned, you're just a great big tub of beer. With us. <laughs> what did you say? I said you're the new super. Mr. Ledbetter himself recommended you for the job, and that's good enough for me. And, uh, say, Mike, old pal, uh, next time you see Cliff, I'd appreciate it if you put in a good word for what? me. What's Cliff Ledbetter got to do with all this? Well, look, who do you think owns Purple Cab? Well, an outfit called the uh, Hercules Transport Corporation. That's right. And who do you think owns Hercules Transport? A uh, 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 fellow named Hercules. No, a fellow named Ledbetter. Clifton Ledbetter. Cliff, yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Root Supervisor Mahoney, I certainly has been a long day, has Ah, yes, it has, dearie. And, you know, I was just thinking back to the time when we Nora. first got... 
In what's peculiar place have you hidden the evening paper? You're sitting on it. I'm... S oh. Yeah, well... Uh, let's see now. Mike. Hmm. Mike! <laughs> Dick Tracy will never get out of this. Michael place. Mahoney! I'm listening, honey bun. <clears throat> sure, you know, a chief supervisor's job is the least a man of your ability and value to the company should have. Oh, no, no. Hold on a minute. Why, the very first thing tomorrow morning, why don't you go right no, no. into the office? Wait, I'm just look, a man. I just started. If I'm good enough to be a supervisor, I, mean, I, haven't even I would started not have yet. a better job than that. Wait a minute. Oh. You know, when I was just a little boy, I used to pray for a lot of things and never got them. I used to ask God for airplanes and lions and lots of things. And I used to wonder why I didn't get them. Till one day my mom told me. She said that God would give me anything I wanted as long as it was good for me and I really needed it. Mother said that I should pray for the best things. And then I'd be heard. Now I, I ask God to please keep our family together and happy and healthy. Praying alone is fine. But if all of you pray together as a family, it makes the prayers a whole lot louder in heaven. It's just like you hear on this program every week. A family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood Family Theater has presented Bobby Driscoll and John McIntyre in Mahoney's Lucky Day, which was written by Erwin Lieberman, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Del Valle. Featured in our cast were Martha Wentworth, Tim Graham, Mary Ship, and Stephen Chase. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the thousands of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Gene Baker expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week at this time when family theater will present Gail Storm in The Valiant Lady. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.